I'm doing, I feel like, way more work than anybody at YouTube or Google is doing, and I'm still only getting 55% of what is being made on that video. Guten Morgen, everyone. Welcome back to Drink and Discuss. On this week's edition, we're talking about making money with YouTube. Welcome back to Drink and Discuss, the show where every week we sit down here in front of the blue sofa, discuss some topic, and have a tasty drink. In the Mixing It Up episode, coupled with this week's video, I made a margatini, which is a potent mix between a margarita and a martini. However, I'm not going to drink it today. I actually poured it back into the shaker and put the shaker in the fridge to save it for another day. I'm just having a glass of cold water in this Rolling Stones No Filter Tour souvenir cup. During the, you know, stay at home, quarantine, social distancing, period, I have been enjoying a lot of drinks and a lot of great wine and trying new things out and I just decided maybe I'll take a break for a while. So I'm taking a week off of alcohol and I just thought I'd share that with you too. YouTube, one of the most popular websites in the world at the moment, a place where a lot of people spend their online time, and a website that has changed my life. I'm assuming most of you have ended up here because you know me from the very unofficial travel guides and the the numbers and the details and everything that I'm gonna be telling you about today are all related to the very unofficial travel guides because at the moment here on April, what is it today? Who knows what day it is anymore? April 22nd, 2020, this channel, the Guten Morgen channel, does not have enough subscribers or watch time to qualify for monetization yet. I'm really looking forward to that happening, but there's a little ways to go. But the very unofficial travel guides, my, my main channel and the one that really has a lot of momentum going for it, that has been monetized for several years now. And over the years, the, uh, the opportunities and the success of that channel has grown and grown and grown and grown. Pretty much in this direction until February 2020. However, I do get asked quite a lot, how much do I make and how do I make money on YouTube? And so I thought I would sit down here on this channel and talk about it. And I hope that I will answer almost all, if not all of your questions, and if not, then let me know in the comments below. How do I make money or how does anybody make money on YouTube? Probably the most popular and the most well-known revenue, uh, revenue source on YouTube, if we're just speaking specifically about YouTube, is called AdSense. And that is the money that we creators make from the ads that Google sells on the videos. So you know, you've got the ads that sometimes are like, you know, like little video commercials that run before or during or after the videos. You've got the little like click away things that show up down here or over on the side. That is all advertising space that has been sold to some company, whoever, you know, the video is for, the advertisement is for. And the more successful a video is, especially in the first few days, the more money it will make, I guess is a good way to say it. I imagine that these channels of people who upload a video and it just automatically gets, you know, like in the first week, several hundred thousands of clicks, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that uh, they are making more money with their clicks than I am on the very unofficial travel guides and I see a different, definite difference between how much I make over time with certain videos in a direct reference to how well they perform like in the first week. And so what I'm imagining happens, and I mean, I've never met the people who are like directly responsible for selling the ads on my channel on the very unofficial travel guides, maybe it's all just robots, but I picture it like this. So let's say I upload a video like my uh, carnival cruise line balcony cabin tour video. This video is the most popular video that I have uploaded so far in 2020. And sometimes it goes really well and sometimes it's like almost nothing. And I'm gonna show you how much money I made with that video in just a little bit. So. I know that that video during the first week also had several thousand views. I think it got around 4,000 views alone just in the first week within the first days of it being uploaded. So like I said, I picture that there's some agency, some agent who then like calls, I don't know, Levi's Jeans and says, listen, person in charge of advertisement at Levi's Jeans, we have this video that is 
performing very well. It is getting, you know, a thousand clicks a day by people living in these countries, in these age groups with like this much money to spend. Would you like to place your ad on this video and get a thousand impressions a day for this price? That's how I imagine it happening. Like I said, how it really happens, I don't know. I just see the end result. So some company is paying Google AdSense to advertise on the video. And I guess business-wise that all makes sense, but it took me a while to understand that. I, as a creator, at least at the level that the Very Unofficial Travel Guides is at now, I have no control over that process. I can decide if I want ads to run on the video if I want them, if the video's over 10 minutes, I can pick if I want ads to be like in the middle of it. I can pick where they are in the middle. I can choose if I want just like click away ads and not like the video ads. I can choose all that, but who advertises on my channel and how much they pay can't do anything about it. Somebody at Google sells the ads on my videos and I get 55% of the income that my channel generates. So however much all of the videos are making, I only get a little more than half of that and 45% of it goes to YouTube or Google. And you know, that is really not a very good split. <laughs> when you consider that I'm putting like all the work into creating this content. I am the one who is, you know, fronting the budget for these trips. And I am the one who is going out there and seeing the sites and capturing all the video footage and editing it together and coming up with the ideas and putting it online. I'm doing, I feel like, way more work than anybody at YouTube or Google is doing. And I'm still only getting 55% of what is being made on that video. Of course, the more successful your channel gets, the more like goodies you get from YouTube. For instance, I am allowed to go to the YouTube spaces. So in many major cities around the world, the one in Germany here is actually in Berlin. So not my hometown, but I have been there and I plan to go there again to produce some things. These are like full dedicated studios that I can use as a YouTube creator with over, I don't know, however many thousand or tens of thousand subscribers, I can go there and use everything inside, all the technology, the green screens, all the fancy schmancy cameras and audio systems and the editing suites, I can use it all for free. So that does save me a lot of money if I was going to be using any of that stuff anyways, but it's not something that I can like pay the rent with, you know what I mean? Water. <sighs> but getting back to actual income, like, like euros or dollars going into my bank account, the, well, up until this whole corona thing happened, the, the biggest source of income for me was Google AdSense. As I mentioned, around February of this year, it all like literally came crashing down. My Google AdSense is down like on the past few weeks, it's been averaging 70% less than I was making before Corona appeared. Really, really rough for me right now as a content creator and somebody who has budgeted, you know, my life and my plans on thinking that I was getting this much and now it's like this much. So AdSense used to be the way that I made the most money with what I do on the very unofficial travel guides. And the second biggest source of income, at least for me, was Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site, which means People who are interested in supporting the very unofficial travel guides or whatever it is you do or other people do um, can give you a little bit of extra dinero for that and they get a little bit of extra entertainment, I guess. On the Patreon page that I created for the Very Unofficial Travel Guides, if you wanna check it out, it's patreon.com slash very unofficial. I post uh, things that I don't post on YouTube normally, like things that I cut out of videos because they were too long or because, uh, I don't know, they just don't fit the main scheme, uh, bloopers. Sometimes I make videos uh, just for the people who are uh, members of my Patreon page. You know, like I sit down and I think, okay, 
This is just gonna be a normal video, but it's only for these people. In fact, I just uploaded a video that I found uh, of my zipline experience on that amazing, crazy, super high, incredibly fast zipline over the lagoon uh, on Labadi. And it's a weird camera angle, which really actually shows how high and how fast that was. Um, but because it's a weird camera angle, I decided to uh, not ever put it in or put it on the main channel. However, it is interesting to watch and uh, that's one of the things that I just uploaded to my Patreon page. So there are people who are interested enough in what I'm doing and generous and helpful and I wanna say loving enough to say, I like that guy, I wanna help him out, and so I'm going to become a member of his Patreon page. I think most of them do it just because they wanna show their support, and like I said, and then they always get something extra in addition to just knowing that they're supporting me. Extra videos, extra insight on my plans, and uh, over a certain level, I also put their names at the end of every video. And I know there are so many creators who have started using Patreon, and I think it's a great way. And a very similar thing to Patreon is the membership. You can become a member of somebody's YouTube channel, and that is uh, very similar to Patreon, but it is YouTube run. So it's like a part of YouTube. And we creators here in Germany, we just got the, uh, that was just like opened up for us until like last week, we weren't allowed to do that. And now we are. And I'm still debating if I want to start that for the very unofficial travel guides or not, because I feel like if I have Patreon already, is it necessary to also do the YouTube membership, what do you guys think? Should I try it or is it gonna be overkill and just turn people off? Previously, like up until February of this year, I was making like this much with my AdSense account and like this much compared to that on Patreon. And now the AdSense has shrunk so far down that I'm actually making more on my Patreon account than I am on YouTube, which confuses me and I really, yeah, I don't know what to say about it, but it is what it is. And I'm happy for all the support that I get because it helps me continue to do what I do. I was just looking here because I couldn't remember and I knew it had changed. Patreon used to take 5% cut from what I, uh, from what my viewers were uh, yeah, giving me. Then there's a difference. It's either 12% or 9% now. I'm not sure, I'll have to check out exactly which plan it is that I'm on at the moment. Either way, as far as working with like managers and agents, you know, from my other uh, drink and discuss uh, about my life in showbiz, usually an agent will take 10% of what you're earning and a manager will take around 20%. So YouTube is taking like so much and Patreon is taking, I would say, like a reasonable, traditional percent. So those are two ways, uh, and I'm gonna tell you about one more way that I do, and then another way that I don't do. But first, I'm gonna have another drink of water. Have you guys been drinking enough water? You know, when you're sitting at home and not really moving a lot, I think we forget that you still need to drink enough water. Something I'm working on. All right, one more way that I make just a tiny little bit of income through what I do on the very unofficial travel guides is I sell merchandise. I use a website called Teespring, of which I'm not really a huge fan, but it's the most popular and it is integrated with YouTube and Facebook, so that makes it very practical. And I sell t-shirts and hoodies and towels. This is something that I started several years ago and I created like a campaign and I sold some stuff and then I didn't mention it for a while and I didn't update it and it kind of just like shriveled. And now recently I started a new campaign and uh, things have been happening over there. But honestly, I've really only made just a little bit of money from that and depending on what product I sell and how much I'm selling it for, it's a different scale of what the profit actually is, what it is that goes into my pocket. And I wanna tell you guys something, when I say goes into my pocket, it's all spent on new trips, it's all spent on getting uh, new cameras, 
better microphone, better lighting. Maybe sometime I'll get a new sofa. I am by no means getting rich with the money that I make from YouTube. Maybe I'll get there. And there, you know, like at the, towards the end of last year, it was looking very promising. I don't know what's gonna happen now. I'm hoping that when things sort of get back to normal that it will quickly, uh, quickly uh, gain the momentum that it had at the end of 2019. And I would love it if this channel could get to the point where I can also start earning some revenue with it as well. I told you I'd tell you about one thing that I don't do over on the Very Unofficial Travel Guides, or I, I, I think I've done it once or twice and just haven't had a lot of success with it and it doesn't really feel good to me, and that is um, have sponsors. There are a couple websites that help companies find YouTube sponsors and YouTubers find companies to sponsor them, and then what happens is a company will either send you some product or pay you to go someplace and create a video about that place or that product. Most of the time that also involves creating a favorable review for this hotel, for this surf school, for this bottle of water, I don't know. Insert your example here. And that's something that I kind of shy away from on the very unofficial travel guides because I say, that I travel around the world to popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it was like to be there. And if somebody's paying me to say that it's fantastic, then I'm not being true to my audience and that's not what I wanna do. And luckily, the very few times that I have been, well, you know, to tell you the truth, I have never been paid to go anywhere and do anything for the very unofficial travel guides. I have been invited and gotten stuff for free like travel costs and hotel rooms and theme park tickets. And I've always mentioned that they were provided to me. And luckily, every time that that's happened, it's been amazing anyways. So I haven't had to like have that moral dilemma in my head. Tell them how fantastic it was even though it was terrible. No, Morgan, tell them the truth. So that's been a good thing. And I think that now I have more time anyways, and I will be pursuing, I wanna call it more like partnerships. So many cruise ships and travel companies, they do social media trips where they invite a lot of creators to come for, to, to like showcase a new ship, a new private island, a new hotel, things like that. And I would love to be in that group of people. I would love to be on those lists, not only because I love to travel and I have fun doing those things, but because the more stuff that I get for a lower price or no price allows me to create ultimately much more content for the people out there who are entertained by my videos and who come to the very unofficial travel guides looking for helpful information for a trip that they are planning. You know what I mean? All right, so I told you I would tell you how much I made from that one video this year. And let me go to the creator app here to tell you specifically how much it was. And like I said, it, it goes up and down. It is really variable, and I don't wanna say that this is um, like standard. I have made from February, March, April, so in the last like two months, I've made $122.48, which is probably around like 118 euros, 112 euros maybe. So that's for one video with almost 35,000 clicks. And to me, when you consider the amount of money I had to spend to go on the cruise and then the amount of time I spent to create and edit that video, you know, just the one video, it really doesn't add up. But when you consider that I'm uploading two videos a week, sometimes three videos a week, and like I said, hopefully someday soon I will be able to um, join AdSense with this channel as well, then it kind of comes together. I'm not courageous enough at the moment to be one of the people who shows you exactly what I made for the whole year, but I thought maybe just by showing you for this one video, it would give you just a little idea. And like I said, a video that only has like 5,000 
uh, clicks now that I uploaded in January. Relatively speaking, that's going to be making way, way less money than this one is, not only because of the less clicks, but just because the ads that will be sold on it won't be of a high value. Is this what you guys expected? Was any of this surprising for you? Was any of this like news for you. I hope you found this interesting. And as always, I hope you guys are doing okay out there, feeling healthy and happy and staying positive and drinking enough water and the occasional cocktail if you prefer. And I hope to see you back here next week for another episode of Drink and Discuss. See you then.